Welcome to the UNSW International Open Day 2020, coming to you live from the stage of the Clancy Auditorium here at our Kensington campus in Sydney. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge the Bejigal people, who are the traditional custodians of the land that we are gathering on today. And I would like to extend that respect to both elders past and present, and extend that to future emerging leaders as well. I would also like to extend my respects to any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders who may be joining us today. My name is Blair Slater, and I'm the Portfolio Lead of Student Career Ready Connections here at UNSW. And today's seminar topic is all about employability and whether it is better to have a breadth of skills or a specific focus of skills in order to enhance your employability. And to discuss this question, I'm joined by three esteemed panelists today. First of all, we have Dominique Delgado from Grad Connection. Grad Connection is Australia's largest online job uh, site and platform that connects current students and recent graduates to employment opportunities. Grad Connection operates not only here in Australia, but around the world, including countries such as uh, Singapore, Hong Kong, and South Africa. And we're delighted to have Dominic here joining us today. We also have Carla, and Carla is a Hayes recruitment consultant at Hayes IT, where she specializes in the recruitment of IT infrastructure professionals in the financial sector. She graduated with a Master's of International Business, Management, and Human Resources in 2019, and completed our professional development program for international students while at UNSW. We also have Prasanth, and Prasanth is currently a master's student in transportation engineering at UNSW, and he's working on a thesis on urban air mobility. He is also a Future of Change scholar and a freelance photographer and filmmaker, and I'm delighted to have all three of them joining us today. My first question will go to, to you, Dominic, and given that Grad Connection has so many connections with well-regarded employers and you're very in tune with industry. Can you tell us a little bit about what are the key skills and capabilities that employers across industries are looking for in graduates today? Great, yes, and thanks so much, Blair, for having me along today. Um, yeah, so in answering your question, really across all industries, employers are looking for grads who have strong technical skills that are relevant to that particular sector. So for example, if there's a grad that's looking to move into IT, having relevant skills like coding and programming are really important. Or if a grad wants to move into HR, having relevant knowledge of recruitment and organizational development strategies is key. Um, at Grad Connection in Australia, we work with just over 450 employers and a com common conversation we have, of what we find from employers, is that they're really looking for grads that are able to problem solve and use strong critical thinking skills. So they're really looking for grads who are able to think outside the box when it comes to problem solving and that, that are able to come up with innovative solutions to existing business problems. Some other skills and attributes that employers are looking for are strong communication skills. And with communication skills, this goes really beyond the verbal communication skills or what grads say. They're really looking for grads that have strong active listening skills and good eye contact, for example, when engaging with others. They also need strong written communication skills. So being able to do things like write professional emails to internal colleagues and managers, as well as to external clients is really important. And these are things that grads and students can do early on in their degree. Some of the other attributes that they're looking for are strong teamwork skills. So being able to really work well as part of a team, making sure that they're not dominating or sitting back too much in a team situation. I suppose it's really having that kind of balance in between active listening, but also participating as well. And another key attribute and skill that employers are looking for is having strong resilience. So how well are grads able to bounce back from setbacks? There's definitely going to be times in your professional career when things don't always go your way. So employers are really looking for people who are able to maintain positivity and learn from things when things don't always go their way. Those are some of the main ones, really. That's great, Dominique. Thanks so much for that. And based on your answer, I would say that it is a breadth of skills that employers are looking for. You spoke a little bit about the disciplinary specific knowledge, um, depending on the degree the student is studying. Um, but you spoke a lot about those softer transferable skills, critical thinking, problem solving, resilience and adaptability. I like how you mentioned communication as well, that it's a lot more than just being able to speak, right? Um, it's that written communication, it's that verbal um, eye contact and active listening as well. So that's fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you for that. Thank you. Now, 
Carla, um, I'm going to ask you the next question here because um, since leaving UNSW, you have worked with organizations such as Apple, KPMG, and now Hayes. Uh, and you haven't been in the job market, if you will, for that long. What has enabled you to be so successful so early on in your career? What are some of the skills and attributes that have enabled you to succeed so far? Yeah, definitely. Thanks, Blair, for that question. And thanks, UNSW, for having me here speak again. Um, well, I'm pretty sure that we all have um, different reasons for coming into university, um, but I know that we share one common goal, which is to grow and develop to where we want to be in the future. Um, first thing that's been enabling me to success further in my career is having a growth mindset. Um, remember that learning and development starts with a growth mindset, and it has helped me during my university life, and it's been helping me move further in my career now as a consultant at Hayes. Having a growth mindset sets you apart from individuals. Yes, we may be taking the same degree, we may be taking the same classes, um, you and I might be doing the same roles and responsibilities, um, but what we get out of all of those experience vary as it depends on how much effort we put in understanding our lectures or classes or team meetings, how much time we allot in doing networking events outside university or outside work, and how much focus we are in achieving our goals. Having a growth mindset currently has been helping me progress as a recruitment consultant at Hayes um, in terms of how I deal with my clients um, in, in order for me to manage their expectations. Um, in, in terms of how I deal with my candidates or job seekers um, in order for me to provide market insights to increase their employability as well. And also to meet my KPIs to be on track for my promotion. Um, having a growth mindset um, helps me to be in a state um, that I don't settle for anything less, um, but always to strive and acquire new skills. Um, aside from having a growth mindset, um, another thing that's been helping me, in a, helping me grow in my career is getting involved. Um, yes, it may sound broad and simple, but it can mean many things. Getting involved um, when I was at universities, it is through internships work experience, professional development programs uh, by UNSW careers and employment. At work, it may be just attending virtual meetings with my colleagues or coming into the office to do a face-to-face -face interaction or probably joining professional organizations like AHRI for myself. It's really through getting involvement that so you really get a better understanding of yourself and as well as the culture that you're in and for you to gain uh, a better insight of the market that you're in. So yeah, I think those two things, growth mindset and getting involved um, have helped me when I was studying in university and definitely has been helping me um, move, move forward in my career. Great, thanks Carla. And I've personally enjoyed watching your career journey thus far and, and continue to monitor it. And you touched on two really important things there. I think um, obviously that growth mindset and seizing opportunities, right? Identifying opportunities and being proactive. And I think that's a nice segue into Prasant because Prasant, you and I met um, first when you completed our professional development program for international students. And you obviously demonstrated a proactive approach in applying um, and becoming part of that program. And then, again, through season opportunities, you were able to turn your workplace experience um, into a part-time job now working with UNSW. So I want to ask you, as a current student, what advice do you have to future students on how to make the most of their time here at UNSW? All right. Uh, thanks, Blair, for the question. Um, you know, to be honest, when I was applying for the professional development program, I had zero clue on what that is and then what that entails. But when I got to know this program is specifically designed for international students, that's when I got to know what it has to offer. And, um, you know, coming from a foreign country, there's a lot to expect in, um, you know, this country, look, Australia, for example, uh, the work culture. Because in India, we have this cubicle system where uh, every employee is is given a cubicle and they're worked, uh, they're working on their computers. But when you come to Australia, we have these open systems where there's nothing called cubicle. It's all open. You know, uh, a boss can see the employee and an employee can see the boss and everyone can see everyone, right? And that's one uh, thing that I had to learn before me getting into the workplace. And the second thing, uh, you know, the language that they use, the slang that uh, these common Australians have, this is not something I 
got to know while I was in India because in India there there are some strict rules in terms of you know calling your boss you know sir and stuff but in Australia you call them by their name that's really interesting when I got to know here and um, after I applied once I got through these seven weeks then I got to then I am confident enough to go outside and then I know what to expect I know how I should behave so that it makes my job easier and as well as the employer as well and then you have that trust between each other and then obviously then the work that I do will the work that I do will definitely be progressive and uh, if I have to give any advice for the future students that who, who are applying for this professional level program I would just say that until and unless you try the answer is always a no so just apply for it then you'll understand what you're good at what you are not good at and then you'll understand what to expect in the future uh, you know workplaces that you would be going into so it's better and then uh, one of the biggest things that you will uh, be able to get in UNSW or any university uh, to make the most of it you know you know what you signed up for as an international student coming to a different country so make the most out of it by participating in the events uh, you know uh, participate in the you know the, the activities or the clubs and societies I didn't know when I came to UNSW there are hundreds of societies that were specifically designed for students for example there's a society called tea society tea and coffee I, I didn't even know there's a society for that I mean so you know get engaged so you will then you'll you will grow your uh, you know thinking uh, your mindset will increase so that's all I guess it's it's simple just apply <laughs> that's great thanks Prasant and again touching on just that proactive approach that you've taken to be able to take advantage of those opportunities and for those of you wondering the professional development program for international students is a three-day seminar career development program that is run twice a year at UNSW uh, so it includes those three days plus the opportunity to complete a 50-hour workplace experience here on campus which Prasant successfully turned into then uh, a part-time job here at UNSW uh, my next question is going to go back to um, Dominique. Dominique, again, you're working with so many employers um, who obviously, I think, like UNSW students. UNSW was very honored to receive Grad Connections uh, Most Employable University Award last year as a result of the strong UNSW students that applied. In thinking of, again, those capabilities, the, the world is constantly changing. So what advice would you have to current students today to be able to stand out amongst other candidates when applying for roles with many of the organizations you work with? Sure. No, thanks for that. Um, I think it really goes back to a lot of what um, Carla and Prashant have said, um, getting involved and having that growth mindset. Um, employers are really looking for grads that have what I call work ready skills. And what I mean by that, it really goes beyond by what you studied academically. How do you differentiate yourself from your peer who studied the same degree as you? Um, so making sure that you're doing extracurricular activities, things like joining clubs and societies that are relevant to the field that you want to work in, um, but also doing things like internships and virtual internships. Um, and that's a trend that I really see continuing, especially now working during COVID-19 and if things continue the way that they are, um, virtual internships are a great way for grads to and students to upskill themselves to learn about the industry that they're interested in working in in the future um, it really gives you an insight into what the world of work is like what a graduate program could potentially look like in the future and a lot of organizations are actually using virtual internships as a pipeline to their graduate program so if you can do this as soon as you start um, there's companies like Inside Sherpa that we work with and we partner with um, and there's lots of organizations and industries that are running virtual internship programs now ranging from IT companies financial services law so there's a whole breadth of experience that you can get whilst you're studying and it doesn't necessarily have to be relevant to your degree as well um, but as I said doing things like that um, joining clubs and societies as well and also having casual part-time jobs as well they give you great transferable skills um, so for example you get a job in retail you might be dealing with difficult cu customers and clients that's something that you will probably end up doing in your f future career as well so having that all-round experience will really help grads and students to stand out in the kind of in the in the future when they're applying for grad programs great thanks dominic it sounds like 
any type of experience really is positive and being able to seize upon that, but also then transfer those skills to other positions as well. And you touched on student societies and internships as well. And I think that's a, a very important concept. At UNSW, internships are often referred to as work integrated learning. And so you can partake in internships um, through a course where you are able to gain course credit um, in addition to work experience. And the will courses and opportunities are primarily arranged through your faculty, but of course, student academic and career success is here to help you identify um, and enhance your application for some of those opportunities as well. That's great advice, thanks Dominic. Carla, coming back to you, you um, are in a very interesting position because you've been successful in your career thus far, but you now work in recruitment. Thinking back to your experience as a student, would you agree with Dominique and what other opportunities might you encourage students to take when they're studying here at UNSW to build those transferable skills? Yeah, definitely. I definitely agree with um, Dominic with what she said. We really are in a competitive market at this stage where upskilling is really important. Taking part-time work, even if it's not related to your degree, um, it's really important because that's where you build your communication skills. Um, for me, uh, something that I can advise or something that students can take advantage of is really um, per making your personal brand um, better. So personal branding for me is really important because um, like what Dominic um, said, differentiating yourself with others can take you places. Um, so t think about your elevator pitch, which is what we learned back at Careers and Development Program with Blair. Um, personal branding indicates what you have to offer. So that would be your transferable skills, your contributions, your values, your past work experience, even in retail or something really related to your degree um, can help you a lot. Um, something that you can do is, it's as simple as tailoring or customizing your CV or resume based on the role that you're applying for um, can really show that you are really um, taking care of your personal brand. So what you can do is analyze the job description, match your skills with the relevant requirements of the role um, and hopefully that you'll get a, your foot in the door um, in the company that you're applying for. Um, probably I can share my experience back while I was studying at university. I was also doing part-time work at Apple as a retail customer service person. Um, so even though that wasn't related to my degree as an international business, it helped me deal with different co uh, difficult customers, like what Dominic has said, um, in order for me to practice my problem solving skills, my communication skills, my personal, my personal interpersonal skills. Um, so I would advise the students um, in UNSW is to really um, be proactive in joining career development programs is really, um, and also to immerse yourself out there doing any work experience that might be or not related to your degree, but it definitely will help you um, shape your um, skills and that can help you progress in your career moving forward. Great advice, thanks Carla. And you touched on personal brand and I think that's becoming um, ever more important, especially now when we consider the wide use, um, not only in Australia, but the global employability market of LinkedIn and how you tell your story, right? How do you talk about your experience and your skills? It's one thing to have that, but then how might you market yourself and describe your experience to employers? And at Careers and Employment, um, coming in to speak to any of the career development learning facilitators, that's a great opportunity for you to reflect on some of your experience, whether it be in your home country or here in Australia, and how you might collect put that together on your resume like you have uh, so done so um, so well. Now, Prasant, I want to um, ask you a little bit again about your current experience here at UNSW. Right. Coming from India, coming to Australia, and being overwhelmed perhaps by all the opportunities, I feel as though you've demonstrated really strong adaptability in terms of adapting to the different demands, um, the pressures of university, but also the opportunities. Can you talk a little bit about, um, you know, how important has adaptability been for you in order to seize upon the opportunities available at UNSW? Uh, right, uh, again, thank you for the question. Um, you know, uh, adaptability is, it, it has been one of the biggest factors for me uh, when I came to Sydney, because when you do masters in a different country, you're not only going there for academics, you know, uh, you become this whole new different person, you know, you start to cook your own meals, you start to do your own chores. And, uh, you know, this is this is where you become self aware. 
And then, you know, once I started to do this job, uh, I was doing a part-time job with the food industry. And then I was also dealing with some customers who are really, really bad. But the, the only thing I could do is just smile and then say, I'm sorry, right? And then this, this helped me to, uh, you know, understand how the market really is. And, uh, you know, uh, in, in terms of the courses at UNSW while I was doing, so the courses are designed in, in, a, in a way that these courses are self-taught. Only the basic material is provided to you. And all you have to do is go to the internet, search your own stuff and get the job done. And my professor used to say this, uh, if, if there was any assignment, he just gives, gives us instructions and uh, you know, just find it out in the internet and then get the job done, right? And in, in this progress, you will get to know that you know, to do one job, you will def uh, definitely find other skills which you will adapt later. Right. And then uh, th that's one, one of the biggest thing I've learned. And, uh, you know, uh, for example, uh, the LinkedIn post that I have done recently, I had never seen such traction to one post. I've done this uh, professional development program and then successfully landed a job, though it was not a direct job. My supervisor asked me if I was interested, you know, uh, so I can only say that connections do matter sometimes. And uh, <clears throat> with that LinkedIn post, Blair contacted me and then said, if I can share my experience, I was really overwhelmed. And um, so I think when you, when, you, when you come to a different country, you should, you should be this person who should test all the waters. So that's what I believed. So I wanted to become this jack of all trades, you know, mm -hmm. do different skills so that you'll figure out what you really want in your life. I might be doing transportation engineering, but I'm also doing filmmaking. I'm also doing photography. I'm also doing different other stuff where I'm still trying. I'm 23 years old, so I have so much more to go in my life. So maybe f further in, in the progress, I will definitely know what I want. So I would definitely recommend that having a wide range of skills definitely be an asset to you and also the employer. But one thing I would like to specifically point out um, is that you know one of the biggest reasons that you have to hire fresh graduates is that you know they have the hunger to learn you know i I'm, I'm i'm really passionate right so you have this technical skills that you've learned in university so uh you know when an employer hires you obviously uh, with that passion uh you know you have a lot of opportunity to grow and that's what i would appeal to the employers out there so, yeah that's great thanks for santan you touched again on taking advantage of those opportunities, being proactive. Uh, Dominique, you mentioned a little earlier the importance of initiative. And I really feel as though the two of you have taken initiative in your current experience here at UNSW, in your current career as well. I mean, it's no coincidence that you've been successful thus far. Um, and I think have been, you know, obviously highlighted um, by employers that Dominique and UNSW work with. In the final two minutes that we have here, I would just like to ask all of you um, to come up with a one sentence, short piece of advice to future prospective students that are out there. We understand and appreciate that it can often be overwhelming when thinking about your university experience. So quickly, we might start with Carla and then we'll finish off with um, Dominique. But Carla, what would be your one piece of advice to future prospective students? Yeah, thanks for that question, Blair. Probably I will repeat what I said earlier, um, that remember that learning and development starts with a growth mindset. Terrific, thanks, Carla. <laughs> growth mindset. Prasant? Um, <clears throat> I would be it's sim simple. So take one day at a time, just focus on today. Uh, tomorrow you've got another problem, day after tomorrow you've got another problem, but focus on today and then uh, you'll be great. Absolutely, one day at a time. I imagine the two of you had I asked, five years ago, would you be on the stage in the Clancy Auditorium with me? You would never have imagined, right? So one day at a time and you don't know what it will lead to. Um, Dominique, what would be your one piece of advice to future students? I would say build your networks um, and use everyone at university as a, as a potential network for your future. This could be people within your course, your lecturers. Um, if there's ever um, industry events that come in that, that are organized, make sure you engage with those people as well, because you just never know where having those networks and those contacts could lead in the future. 
Fantastic. Thanks, Dominique. I like how you said you never know. And I think that, you know, that is a bit of a summary. You spoke about you don't know what you don't know. You didn't know about the professional development program. Um, Carla, you didn't really necessarily know at first how the skills you acquired while working at Apple would then lead into successful opportunities with KPMG and Hayes. And Prashant, likewise, how you didn't know certain opportunities and doors would open with the professional development program. So I want to thank all of you, Dominique, Carla, and Prashant, for joining me here today in the Clancy Auditor to speak about employability and how um, really a breadth of skills is going to help you enhance your employability. So if you do have questions about enhancing your employability here at UNSW, please come and visit the Student Academic and Career Success booth in the Advisory Center. I'll be there to speak with you. And when you do come to UNSW, I encourage you to take advantage of the opportunities that Student Academic and Career Success have to offer. And we look forward to seeing you here at UNSW Sydney. Thanks, everyone.